Now, here's the thing is that this isn't a choice. This is before the, Jesus' sacrifice. If you don't put the sacrifice down, then guess what? Your sins are on you. You're cursed. And so you start falling into despair because you don't know what to do. And you realize like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to dig into my savings to pay for this sacrifice. And then you pay for <laughs> the sacrifice and you, you're, you're just in absolute despair and shame. Because here you are, you're in front of your family and you're, you, know, you can barely pay for just a simple little sacrifice. And, and you start to wonder, like, how am I actually going to get ahead in life? And you can't understand why there's all these rules that are taking your money away from you. And then there's this anger that starts to build up because you start to wonder, what? it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't have to be this hard to provide and survive. And you're about to walk out and never come back. Because honestly, like, if this is, <laughs> if this is the kingdom of God, then why would I want to be a part of it? And you're about to give up on everything. But as you're about to walk out, you start to hear a rumble. Catches your, catches your ear and you turn around and, and you start to realize that there are all these, these oxen are moving out and all these pigeons are flying up into the air. And like, there's just so many pigeons, you can't even see the sun because something has just been released and you can't even see what's happening. And you're wondering, what is going on? So you try to get closer. You're trying to be careful because you don't want to get trampled. And suddenly you see this man behind this huge ruckus that's just causing everyone to go crazy in the temple. And there's this man, he has a whip, and he's hitting the ground. And the funny thing is, is that no one's, uh, no one's touching him. <laughs> he's not laying a hand on anyone, but no one wants to put a hand on him. And you see that, wow, who is this guy? And you get closer. And you realize that this must be the Messiah. And he goes and he starts flipping over the money tables. And you see that all the money that was on those tables were people's livelihoods, thousands of people's livelihoods taken away from them. He flips it over. He shoots them all out. And you think like, wow, maybe this is the guy that the prophet spoke about who would rescue us. And then he looks at you, and he points at you, and he has you come over. And you're a little scared because he's got a whip of cords in his hand. But you walk over to him, and you can see there's this, like, this fire in his eyes. And then as you get closer, you start to realize that he actually, his eyes are watering up when he sees you. And he says to you, I saw what they did to you. I saw what they did to you. Then he gives you a big hug, and he says, no more. And as he's giving you his hug, you start to feel your back straighten up. You feel this fire go down your back, and you, you start to realize, oh, my gosh, my back's been healed. <laughs> and then you think, oh, my, if I've been healed, maybe my daughter can be healed. And so you bring your baby girl, and he lays his hands on her, and she is healed. She's no longer crippled. She can now see. You see her dancing in the streets, and suddenly other people start seeing what's happening, and they start joining in. <laughs> so the question is, is, what is God's response to spiritual abuse? And his response is, he mourns with you. He gets angry with you. He sees you in your place. And he will avenge you. He will bring the truth out. But most importantly, he wants to heal you. 